Hi, this is Malan Shalvi. In this episode, I'll show you a simple method to apply skin retouching in LumaFusion. Skin retouching, often referred as skin softening or skin smoothing, is a process where skin blemishes are brushed or hidden while preserving the details that make your subject identifiable. This is the video that we'll be using for this tutorial. Let's start in LumaFusion with a project having the video already placed in the timeline. When selecting a video for this effect, look for close-ups where the face is evenly lit. This will make the step of masking out skin facial areas easier to implement. Edit the video. Add the original preset whether you are going to make color adjustments or not. If you are adjusting colors, this is the time to do so. I'm just slightly increasing the reds. When you are done, exit back to the timeline. Make three duplicates of your video and place them one after the other in the timeline. Now, let's start with the mask that will define the areas affected by the skin retouching. Edit the first video. Turn off the original preset. Under Keys, add the green screen key preset. Move it up so it's first in order in the list of presets applied to the video. Tap on the key color eyedropper and select a color that is in the middle of the range of colors that appear in the face of the subject of your video. Adjust hue range, saturation range, and brightness range until you get a mask that covers most or all of the face, but excludes the eyes and at least part of the mouth. The mask will work better if also hints at the shape of the nose, but it's not a must. Your mask may end up including areas outside of the face of your subject. Try bringing those areas to a minimum. If the areas included in the mask, other than the face, are not in focus, don't worry much about it. You won't see much of a difference. You may end up including some areas of hair in your mask. Try limiting those areas as much as possible. Now, adjust the value of erosion distance and edge blur radius to soften the mask a bit. Next, if needed, slide spill suppression to the left to restore the original colors of the video. Still in the editing window, play the video to ensure that the mask works all throughout. Turn the original preset back on. Make sure it is second in order after the green screen key preset. Shortly, we'll be adding effects to retouch the skin that will affect the colors of the video. In order to preserve the original colors, we'll continue with this effect with no saturation and we will add the colors back as a separate layer later on. For that purpose, under the original preset, reduce saturation to zero. Exit back to the timeline. Place the video that you just edited right above the second one. As you can see, the monochromatic background comes from the first video on top, while the face in color is from the second video below it. Edit the second video. Look for the original preset that should already be there because this video is a duplicate of the original. Reduce saturation to zero as you did with the first video. Exit back to the timeline. Now let's restore the colors, but as a separate layer. Place the third video above the other two. Edit the video and change the blend mode to color. D 
This will cause the colors of the final composite to be taken from this video, while details, contrast, levels, and texture will come from the two videos below it. Exit back to the timeline. Edit the video in the main track. Tap on the Styles section. Add the Bloom preset. Keep the radius at around 10 and adjust the intensity to a point where you are satisfied with the skin retouching. Now add the Gloom preset. Keep the radius at around 10 and adjust the intensity to a point where you are satisfied with the way the combination of Bloom and Gloom is retouching the skin. You may need to go back and forward between these two effects to get the desired result. Exit back to the timeline. This is how it looks now. From my experience, while you are progressively retouching the skin, you may lose a bit of the sense of the true likeness of your subject. For that reason, it is a good idea to compare the video with and without the effect. That's what the fourth and last video in the timeline is for. Place it above the other videos and manually adjust cropping so you can check the before and after results. If the result is too cartoonish, you may want to tone down the effect. On the other hand, if you don't see much of a difference, you'll probably need to crank it up. So this is it for this episode. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, give it a like, and click on the bell so you are notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.